What's happening, people? Welcome back to All You Can Eat. I say All You Can Eat Warriors. And we welcome you in on it from every platform here on YouTube, on IG, uh, X, and on Ash Thomas TV. Um, you. On YouTube. And I've got my man back. I know you guys have missed him. <laughs> uh, I was going solo in the woods for a little bit there. I was a little bit lost, but now I found my partner and we're on our way back to home base uh, but my man ash how are you doing brother good to see you some would some would say brother you're the halfback and i'm the five eight you know what i mean it's good to be back <laughs> together brother it's good to be back i'll be luke metcalf to you sean johnson baby and <laughs> but no it's good to be back man good to see everyone good to see all the familiar faces and all that and um yeah appreciate you having me back on bar ah oh, anytime man always as you know ash is my co-host so he's part of the family he's part of the furniture uh, yep. Here at uh, Wires Up TV and on All You Can Eat Warriors. You're big up everyone in the chat. Uh, Jackson Ford, let's eat. Let's eat, baby. Let's eat. Uh, Daniel Berry, morning. Good morning, sir, from wherever you are on the other side of the world. <laughs> it may be. Stells, what's up? Good to see you. And Rob, my man. Chair Kiwi Raider. Yes, sir. Let's go. Welcome in, everyone. Yes, yeah, and on Instagram, if you are in the building, uh, please jump in on the uh, post of the YouTube link. Sorry, we don't get you guys comments. Don't can't get to you guys very much. So if you do have a comment, please chuck um go up onto Wiles Up TV. The link is in the in the live. Come on over to YouTube and, and share your call it all over there. Everyone in on Twitter, thank you very much. And everyone from Ash Thomas TV, appreciate Ooh. you guys coming through. And Josh was saying, let's push. Yes, let's get into this, guys. Um but let, let, we'll start off, guys. I know you're you're buzzing about that teamless. We we know you are. <laughs> but we've got a little bit of my homework to finish off. We're a little bit behind. <laughs> so let us get into our homework, um, please, uh, if you will. Um, but, um, yeah, so let's let's just recap. We're going to do the second half guide. Hey, my man, 40. This is my man, 40. This guy, remember the guy, uh, No Mates? And all yeah, 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 all yeah. No actually, mates. He, yeah. <laughs> He's actually a guy I know from IG. I just make, click the dot, uh, put the dots together today, but. No Very way. good. Dude. Um, hold, holding it down on the north end at, at Mount Smart every week. Um, so shout out to the bro forty. Good to see you, my man. Yeah, Very we're gonna do some bro. some some um some video footage right now. We're just gonna finish off that second half, and it's good to get Ash's view. Ash hasn't had a chance to even share some of his his, his views on the game. <laughs> um, the, you know, so let's get some some of his his talking points on that, uh, and we'll talk through it as we watch some of the footage. So let me set that up right now. Um, let's go. and then, um, let's see if we can get this one up here. There we go. Okay. So just going, uh, second half, uh, we did the last night with, with, uh, with, um, with, uh, Josh last night going into second half here. Actually, just quickly, Ash thoughts on the game, yep. overall performance. Yep. As we, how'd you feel brother? Yeah. Yeah. Overall, uh, obviously, you know, good to get the win overall. Um, I thought that we started really, really strong. We left a couple of tries out there as we, as we know, 
Um, you know, with the AFB, could have offloaded the Shawnee in a couple of moments there. You know, the um, was it the bomb trial Jacko that could have passed to Mets? There's a couple of moments where we could have just doubled on a lot of what we had. We could have gone up like 20 to 4, 20 nil, um, really, if you actually thought about it. But I feel like defensively, we held in really well. After the, like, we had a couple of moments there, we did lapse out of the game, and we pretty much were giving them a little bit of a chance a little bit late on just to, you know, give us a roller coaster ride that we didn't really want. And, but like the overall bones of these performances, this was probably our worst performances out of the 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 last three, you know, or last couple of games and that. But we ended up coming home with the W against a really, really strong outfit that played a very good game as well. If you probably noticed, you know, the Raiders are a very high percentage type football team. Um, and we are growing to be becoming that also, you know, with a high percentage game and backing our defense and using that as attack. It's kind of like a very similar to what the Panthers have been doing where, you know, they use a lot of their defense and their their, their line speed to really turn the game into our favor. And we're, it's showing in the first couple of games in the season what we are putting into play. So I'm really excited for later on. Um, just good to get the win here. Uh, obviously, you know, it was pretty disappointing. We feel like we're one of those teams, bro. And I want to touch on you. We feel like we're one of those teams that just get unlucky sometimes. Hey, like we get on these massive high and that, and I feel like the boys are trying their heart out and their momentum's just on. But like yep. late in that game when the Raiders started to come home, they had obviously the Capstone Challenge win on Chanel, which was kind of like, you know, come on, let's go. Um, and then the Metcalf <laughs> one, they got challenged. They challenged that. They got that one. It just felt like back to back to back. Like we just got unlucky, unlucky. It just seems to happen with us these days. But um, hopefully with the full 80-minute performance coming up in the future, because uh, we will build towards that, um, we will see a little bit more luck go our way. And I had a couple of moments of luck in this game, but you know it did feel like that we got unlucky a little bit mid to late in that game for the Raiders to come back pretty strong. So yeah, that was my overall totally. thoughts overall. Yeah, totally, agree. totally agree on that, bro. Um, yeah, don't talk, don't talk all those quarter that quarter all there. Um, this one here, let's we'll get get into our video here session here. Mm. Just dropping, um, dropping the kids off pretty much, dropping dropping Jackson Ford underneath. Yep, just a nice simple one. And I think we need to do more of it. What's your thoughts on that? Yeah, 100%. Especially with the, you know, you've been speaking about how we've been running like deeper V for a while now. And if you if you go back to that little part of that footage there, like, you know, Shawnee, uh, Metz is not that far away from Jacko at that point, And Jacko is folding back under. Metz is like kind of like that man out the back that is like late. So if Shawnee was just a dummy to, off there. Um, yeah, we could have had a really nice, you know, option there to give it to Mets on the outside. So True, on the I outside, love that yeah. option too, you know, and I've, obviously, you know, Jacko had struggled with a lot of short balls on the line, bringing him back under, obviously is a little bit easier for him to take that carry and, you know, do yeah. the better part of what his game is, which is more work rate based. So that's my opinion on that. What, what have you been looking at this? What are you I just think it's a safe option for him. 100. Works well for his style. And giving him like touches that he, you know, a lot of our guys need touches. Um, two forty. <laughs> hey, shout out Ninad. I think you're, you're coming over from Ash's um, channel. Yeah, um, Ninad, Dragons fan, mate. Moment. Watch out for this man here. <laughs> oh, is he? This is not the Mad he Dragon, is, is it? <laughs> no, not the Mad <laughs> Dragon. <laughs> that guy's a bit crazy, brother. <laughs> oh, no. Shout out Ninad. Thanks for jumping over here, uh, watching. And Rob Hill is saying we're watching on two forty p.m. My apologies, <laughs> yeah. guys. Um, Try and try and pixelate, get away from the pixelate, and if you can, um, my apologies, <laughs> but we won't be too long. We'll, we'll keep it no. moving. Um, but we'll, yeah, so just carrying on from um, same again here. Yep. And and, and just bear with me, everyone. I have to kind of um, just freeze frame every. This is like watching, you know, when you play the game with the kids, it's a statue game, and you turn around. <laughs> what's it? <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Hold right there. Stop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like that. Uh, what was it? What's that? What's that Korean TV show? And it's a, oh, uh, what's it now called? You've done me in, bro. My yeah, body is completely gone. I had it before. Squid Game. Squid, squid Game. Games. Squid, squid Games. That's it's what like it squid is. Games, bro. Right? Yeah. I play Squid Games with them and uh, video analysis. Um, <laughs> yeah, I love Korean me, food, bro. All you can eat. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay, and another one, just dropping them underneath again. Just simple stuff. Gives them options. Um, he kind of goes back in uh, into that space there. Yeah, I just think it's a good little thing. Um, welcome in, Ezra. Um, and welcome in, Heidi. Hi, Jacko. Uh, I think, like, the big <laughs> thing with the um, pulling him under, bro, like, you probably just noticed from the footage there, is, like, very early on with the Sharks, we noticed how 
quickly they wanted to come up and shut down our playmakers. Um, yep. And so with this, doing something like this, obviously Shawnee's bringing those players that have got the heat on him outwards to bring Jacko under to that space in behind the ruck. So it would Good work call. really, really well late in the game. Obviously we're tied um, middle, you know, A defenders yes. and stuff like that. But um, yep. I love that look too because, you know, our playmakers have been getting a lot of heat lately from defenses. Obviously Shawnee too being our main um, playmaker. Yeah, yeah, good call. Yeah, Laker, man, cool. I don't know Minecraft made a footy game. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, Yo, everyone's man. lighting me up on my footage. Come on, guys, man. I spent time cutting this footage up. <laughs> yeah, give this man a break. <laughs> Richard, evening, brothers. I agree on that play and the outside hole run, too. Jacko is fast. Manly do that play, too, eh, with Turbo. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah good call. Not bad. But, yeah, just I think it's just something. It's a safe option, um, that type of thing. Um, let me pull that comment off so we can... Um, yeah. So anyway, yeah. Um, I think this is another kind of variation. Just early, not nothing heavy at the line. Yeah. Give it to him early. Um, you know, he dropped three. I mean, it's probably they probably reflected on from the Sharks game and thought, okay, just give him an early touch before the line. Um, simple stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, well, it works really well for Mets too with the speed that he has out the back. Like it sets Mets up in the best positions possible on those three and two looks. So that's what yep. I love about, about that having that look. It puts him in a more of a fullback look, which is where I feel yes. like he thrives a little bit more. Yeah. Um, and I've got some Mets footage. I think um, there's some touches that we can go over. Now, this was the double block. Now, actually, mm. Manly did really good kind of pushing up, I suppose, closing the gap. I feel. Um, yeah. And then Hopwadi releasing really well. Um, shoulders forward, you know, straight, uh, no turn in at all. So I suppose really nullif nullified this play. What's your thoughts on this play? Do you think it's just credit to Hopwadi, to to Canberra, probably yeah. keying in on this type of a play and setting up the defence? Yeah, 100%, 100%, especially when we run such a similar play against the Melbourne Storm to get our first points of the game, and we saw how hard that sensor usually bites in on that. Um, I think that's just all on Albert for really trusting his inside man with Hudson Young there. I think um, those boys really worked as well as they could against that bl double yeah. block shape, especially the amount we were running on um, on poor Young freaking Strange. Um, I thought he did really well, the Young six for the uh, Raiders, with the amount of ball that we ran at him. Um, yeah, he got a ton of looks. Yeah, now you're bang yeah. on there. But um, yeah, it was it was good to see. We still like you know we're confident enough to keep running that play, and it'll come off. Like it's just obviously with good defensive teams, sometimes it may not yeah. happen the way we want it to be. I actually looked at it compared to the Melbourne Storm game, and I was trying to see mm. what we was the field kind of shortened up. No, it was actually kind of identical in yep. terms of field placement. I think if anything, Melbourne were a bit the the defensive line was a bit more jagged. I, as you can see, I think Canberra's line speed and their spacing and and everything yeah. uh, was really tight. So you've got to give credit yeah. to Canberra, I think, in many cases. Um, I just love the extra ripples that we have. Like, you know, we run that double block and then now we're running one under with Catewell. And, yeah. Um, and who's on that? I mean, that's probably Catewell on that. And he got um, two a pick on the out. So we're running double blocks, one under, one as a in line. <clears throat> it's really yeah. good to see the multiple shapes. I think the AFB one, the try for the first game, we ran yes. a very similar shape as well. So um, there's so many different variables to our attack, but it's very similar, if that makes sense. So it's really good to see the boys really in tune here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really good call. And good call, uh, Joshua Hill saying, that play with Rocco uh, more mm. often will open up. So, yeah, it will. And I think that's, it's not like, it's like kind of, um, that's one of those type of things where over time, you know, just continue to put those, those, because it's an overlap. It's, you're going to continue to stress that part of the field. Yeah. Um, and uh, that's what we did to the Sharks. Yeah, good call, Joshua. Is what we did to the Sharks last year. And that moment um, that Rocco didn't tip onto Dallin, like that happens. Dal uh, Rocco usually gets that right more times than not. Like that one time yes. was like a one off, you know, but that would have been a for sure. For me, in my eyes, I would have thought Dallin would have finished that if that was a tip on from that corner. That was a very early on play, I'm pretty sure, wasn't it? So Yeah, it was. Yeah. It was. It was pretty early on. Um, yeah, me and me and me and Thing talked about it. We even talked yeah. about last night about the AFB one. The, um, mm. What's his name? Savage had closed the space off to pass inside. It was really good work by Savage in terms of almost closing all the options for, for AFB. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just just like – and those ones, you know, the general fan consensus, oh, we bombed three tries. Well, 
probably the the Ford one for sure, but um, I think the AF there's a bit more nuance around the AFB one and even the Beery one. Yeah, you know, it kind of looked kind of tight anyway, but you know, just something to. Yeah, just because yeah, Shawnee was running on the inside that got covered, and then when Savage got him, he couldn't really get that offload off. So it was yeah, really he tough, couldn't. But if I felt, felt he went earlier, maybe Shawnee's footwork would have got him home. But then again, that's more say like up in the air sort of thing. But yeah, yeah. it's good to see. The, well, we're probably this is the Ale line break, is it? Yes, bro. This is the Ale yes. line break. Yeah, yeah. I, I noticed it straight off. Like this was good to see. You know, now it's not just AFB Barnett's run off this line as well. We got Ale running off this line as well. So it's really good to see multiple different forwards running like this. Yeah, this is really just. Look, I mean, the Beautiful game. Beautiful from Tahu. Sorry, guys. Minecraft. <laughs> <laughs> this is my Waz Minecraft. I need to do. A, I need to do my own Minecraft uh, channel <laughs> of, of video That's analysis. Good, um, but good. yeah, the Tahu again. The classic looking out the back. Mm. Hudson probably making eye contact with Tahu. Uh, yeah. And, and 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 moving. Um. And just beautiful. Levi, tough night there. Yeah. And we, and we don't, well, not that we, I, I suppose we don't go to this option in, you know, because maybe we are drawing the defenders in, but it's nice to see us actually go to the lead runner, <clears throat> you know, and especially Ali yep. showing the skill that he's got there. Yeah. I thought this was beautiful. This is my only concern it. about sometimes mm. is because we are so deep. It's almost support plays behind, like five, six meters behind. Yeah, yeah. A lot of our what's your really thoughts good on that play? Yeah, yeah. I, I I agree. Like there is a little bit of lack and behind. I feel like a lot of our good support play comes from like Mets and stuff, and probably his speed to get past. You know, Space, broken. Yeah. yeah, he just gets past them pretty quickly. And that in this one here, obviously, you know, I'm thinking Sheck. He must have done a lot of early work. You can just see him on the outside of this. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure. You know, he got through 200 meters in that game. So, um, but just Barney did massive to cover it. Yeah, bro. Like, <laughs> as a front it was roller, massive, eh, bro. Far out. Look at that. And and a great pass too. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was kind of the situation with Ford is that he needed to look, you got you gotta you gotta draw in Rapana, obviously, but then you gotta get the ball in front of uh is that uh, Hudson Young. Yeah. Or who yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, Hudson, you gotta you yeah. can't you gotta be, you know, it's gotta be a kind of a line ball pass right yep. in the pocket. Beautiful. Beautiful. Um, and even like... though it wasn't a try at the end of it, I thought, man, just wicked. Yeah. Look at Barnett on the edge there, eh? <laughs> Bro, the rampage, work he got man. through defensively in that, and then he got there, like, well done. Like, that's good yeah. to see. That's what we want to see with the Warriors. This is what it's like. We've been seeing it through the first couple of weeks. We're doing all these little things right. It will come together, you know what I mean? These are little yeah. things that we, a lot of other teams don't have. Like, look, the Titans at the moment are really struggling with their, um, the boys coming together and all that. And we're seeing yeah. the boys came together really quickly. So it's good to see. This Shit. one was the play the ball after. I thought short um RT should have gone short side. Short side. Um, I wonder yeah. if they're calling short. You can just see a hand here. Oh no, Shawnee went back. Maybe Shawnee overcall. Thought, he could have because you know he he could you know he could take Savage on there. Oh you know he yeah. could and he's got Dallin right on that sitting on the hugging that wing with Barry. I think he could have cut he could have created something there. But anyway, I mean, he could have came out and really <clears throat> shifted and created a three on two two look with Barry and Dallin on that side. But yeah, maybe Shawnee overcalled him to come back in. I'm not too sure. Possibly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Shout out Jacko saying Ali is really improving with power, size, and footwork. I would have him on the bench before Bunty. Yeah, that's yeah, maybe a talking we'll point tonight to that, as we yeah. the team list. Um. I like using uh, Richard saying I like using the lead runner if it's on. I reckon Tori saw the option and went short ball because it won. Yeah, it, it is good and and it gives what the the good thing about it too is you get a quick play. The, if you can get a if you can get them with a the legs tackle, even if they catch it, because if you look at Strange and that they've come in so deep, you can actually yep. get a quick play the ball and then you can send it. You know, it almost, it's like a yeah, it's like springboards because those guys have dropped so much in to cover their shape. You get them going back almost 15, 20 meters if you can get a quick yeah. play, uh, good play ball off it, you know. So we're very much yeah. like probably the best team in the competition for running stuff like that off our middles because it's not just Tohu that can really <clears throat> use that. We got Tohu. Tohu's amazing. He can play like a six roll and all that. But like Dylan Walker's another one that we, we bring him on, it, like his foot speed from the middle and that late pass that he has as well. We saw that last year, yes. with Jazzy and stuff. And then even yeah. like. AFB is starting to get that part to his game. Yeah, he's got that touch. Mitch yeah. Barnett as well. So, like, we've got versatility with multiple but different players to look at doing the same sort of thing. 
and so many different looks. So that's the versatility we have on our side at the moment. It's really, really nice. Look at look at old Lusick trying to get a Metcalf here. <laughs> He's him. trying to go look for that short ball. Look at him. He was like, hit me, hit me, hit me. <laughs> right, pull those socks up higher, boy. That's <laughs> get there, get there quicker, boy. Oh, oh, awesome. yeah, yeah, I just think that might have been um could have probably gone short. We got the penalty. Well, we got yeah. the six game and we got the penalty anyway. But yep. Um, what's this one here? Oh, this is Metcalf. Okay, so this this is kind of like I th I thought you yeah, I kind of agree with you. It's kind of a fullback look where you can work a two on one or a two on two. What's yeah. your thoughts on on this one here? Maybe Capewell right. too wide on his line, or, or, or yeah, obviously this is there's when, a few um, things here. This is when RTS had to go to fullback because um, I, I don't know if you spoke about Tane's numbers, but Tane only played like forty minutes in that game, and he pumped out some numbers in that game. Oh, me and incredible. me and Josh, yeah, me and Josh were talking about like his actual um, the way he runs into contact. He can identify what type of run he wants to make to get on the front foot. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So 100%. even though you, you're thinking a small guy, he's really smart with what he like. Like he bumped off. We we looked we looked at the one where he bumped off uh, Fogarty. Yeah. Um. Yeah, but it was because Fogarty had dropped down low, and he recognized oh, I can just bump him and, and get a, a quick play the ball. Yeah, yeah, you know, like he knows how to kind of use his body the best way to get the best for him. But yep. yeah, no, insane numbers, bro. In, in, absolutely insane numbers. So really, that um, just adds on top of what this look sort of happens. So maybe Kate, well, obviously, you know, being a fill-in on that side, probably didn't get himself in that right position that we really wanted yeah. to. Obviously, you know, Mets probably have to overcut for that obstruction um, unless he really runs a short, but it really doesn't open up anything. <clears throat> so he'd have to overrun his run. Um, That's a good Kate call. Or would have to cut back in. That would usually be RTS. Yep. And... Um, You'd think that last week we kind of did that double block like that kind of, and, and they got there was a tip on from Metcalf to Montoya, yeah. and, he, and he bombed the try. We talked about that. Um, yeah. yeah, um, yeah, and so yeah, you 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 bang on there. But this um, is the wrinkle that I love though, bro. Like we've come so far with Mets now. Like um, obviously I want Mets to learn how to use an edge back roll. Like that's such a big thing for a half is to control the game, use an edge back roll, and use that to your advantage. shawnee has been doing it for years and years, but like. We've noticed that he has shortcomings there at the moment with him and Ford. Yeah. Now we're getting him on fullback looks that are really opening up his speed on the edge, and he's beating up that first defender. Like he's already got the first step there, nearly at that that um that center that's had a very early cover on him. Like Kwell barely yep. dragged anyone in there, um, and Mets yeah, just yeah. his speeds has just got him there. You know what I mean? Like I, that's I actually just think speed. yeah, that's yeah yeah. <clears throat> what I actually think is that if 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 Montoya is just a tad bit wider. Hmm. Um, cause I think Dallin's really good at this type of stuff Yep. where he, his timing and running, like he can get on the outside there. I think Montoya might be just a little tight. <coughs> yep. Um, yeah, just, it's, uh, it's a, it's a, yeah, it's a little thing it's where a little detail. It is. see he wants Montoya just on the outside, a bit of uh Kotrick there, if he could get it. I but really felt almost... on this play. In my moment, bro, I'm really, really sorry. In the moment, I really did think that Mets could have dummied and come back inside, like really yeah, early on. Too. Yeah. Um, because he's got that tackle break ability, he's got that little sharp step inside, and that that lead, that cover wasn't really covering as hard. Um, at first, I honestly thought he could have just dummied and gone. That that center, I didn't think would even wrap him up. But then again, I could be wrong. A lot, you know, a lot happened at the end of there. But yeah, I honestly thought he could have gave uh, dummied and went. Yeah, just a hard, just a hard dummy, eh? Like a hard step, or yeah, yep. and just cut it right so. back. Yeah, yep. there's a few things, especially there for done. third tackle. <clears throat> um, yeah, and Montoya could have come back in as well because he was so tight. Yeah. He could have just dropped underneath. There's, there's just communication. There's a lot of things going on here. Um, yeah, but yeah, credit to Moko in that mm. situation is just can cover that ground smoothly as well. You know what I mean? We're talking about a guy that's just. He's very quick. And I think in, in general, Canberra did very well with a lot of their defensive shape, just really, really solid. Yeah. Uh, what do we got here? Oh, this is the type of look I was talking about. Getting Metcalf in on uh and in the middle or out the back, like first mm. receiver. Yep. And let him make some decisions. Yep. You know, instead of it's always SJ. I think this is yep. better for Metcalf. Exactly. Because usually, as we know, he's usually on the that's usually SJ there, and then he's on the next wave. I reckon exactly. just give him a few of these touches early, you know, you know in the game. Yep. And just let him – and look, and you can have the dummy and go. You got 
you got options there, stummy and go, all good, you know? Yep, that's, exactly. That's where I think he should get more of those middle, um, you know, one off the ruck passes underneath, and he, he just makes some decisions. What's your thoughts on yeah. that? I think like a lot of it does come from um, because I would I, I completely agree. Like this is the whole thing of like I would love to him to learn to use that edge back row a little bit more because he would get looks like this. People are starting to really um, like get to him a lot earlier because his running game is really really damaging and like that dummy yeah. and go is there, but it only will be there later on in the game if he uses Jacko. Like if he uses Jacko late and has that little tip on. Like we've yes. seen it with Tomato and all that, you know, Jacko can do that, run those beautiful lines and get in behind, but it will come later on where he'll just dummy and that will be there. Like we saw Jamal Fogarty was just like, he was biting on the dummy all day. He's just like, I want, like, you're going to run, you're going to run. But a little bit more of using Jacko and learning that combination there will open that up for him to dummy and that, that half is going to really yeah. struggle to sit on that, you know what I mean? Yeah, I think I think I totally agree. I think there's like going to be an opportunity, like I said, maybe use his running game first to – to open up the exactly. passing game you exactly. know what i mean so like yep. doing getting him a few of these touches in the middle of the park um where he's not going to run anyone out of space he's going to create um find holes for himself and if he can find those holes for himself then the tip on for jacko is going to be there later on like you know and vice versa so you exactly. know what i mean yeah but I, I, that's good i i saw he's he's slowly getting a more uh more of a role you know what i mean yeah. he's getting more kicking opportunities yep um yeah things are expanding for him at the moment but, um, a bit more of that yeah 100 percent. Uh, uh, i think this, this was the try oh this is montoya mate okay yeah this is a bit of um a... yeah this was a bit of uh um i just think it's just a really i think we had them covered here yep. yeah um and like, I Just think really the biggest thing for me is like having <clears throat> Sheck at that center role really um, gave Montoya a little bit more like confidence on that side to sit maybe more yeah, good, and having yeah, it's... Kate well there, he was <clears throat> trying to make a decision early because just before this was when he gave away the, uh, they had the challenge uh, brought back because he hit um, Tomoko, I think on that that run and Tomoko put it out or was it the one he hit him and it, the ball went out yeah. and he got the reset. Yeah, 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 the ball went that out and yeah, the reset, one. yep. And this one, yeah. he was trying to make plays a little bit too much because of not having RTS yeah. inside of him where RTS <laughs> would have been like, just wait, just wait, you know what I mean? I think that's more of that, but he does have this in his game a little bit, Monty. Yeah, he does. When he doesn't trust the person, I mean, we've seen it with Pompey. Montoya exactly. Vati with the centre jammer. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, the jam and nothing. That's a, that's too. a classic that's a classic Vati Vay there. <laughs> but Vati, I mean Vati Vay would hit nah, he'd be hitting this too, but um <laughs> he usually whack Bro. Ball. I heard some commentary team because I watched the clip of this and someone was like, he's going for intercept, and I was like, that was the first time I ever thought that he maybe even looked for the intercept, but like we're seeing here, like I don't oh I never saw what he was trying to do. Like I was hoping he was just gonna try and shut down Tomoko again. But he ran on the inside shoulder of Tomoko. And that's why I was like, I don't yeah, know what's on going easy. on. Well, I thought he was just going to whack Tomoko and just stay on that line. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, but he, <laughs> but yeah, it's a good call because he's done this before. I mean, Montoya with Pompey, mm -hmm. we know what, and you know, that could be dodgy this week. Um, you know, yeah. but yeah, he seems to have a lot of trust with Artie. But simply there, it shifts to um, Tomoko. It's just hold, hold and, and then mm. Metcalf cut him. And then you're working in just two on two, and then you know it's it's not a hard hard read there, but man, he just flies. <laughs> He's like, oh, we had oh what am I doing? That's what I mean. Like this pause is even worse. Like he got way inside shoulder. I yeah, way, like, yeah, yeah. And we still he... maybe had a cover on like you know <clears throat> Mets trying to cover inside. Yeah, like, Tomoko was probably going to beat him seven. Like you know, he's so strong, Tomoko. But yeah, yeah, we had numbers there. That one really, yeah. If yeah, <laughs> that was an, I can't, no words there, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No I, words. I'm going to show you uh, the, the behind view, and, and you can, can kind of see it. Like, um, it, it's actually, it's everything's kind of covered. I mean, inside push from Ali there, pushing out. Uh, Tohu's going off. Yep, yeah, sweet. And then, like, it's nothing, the it's jump nothing. Out from Mets. Yeah, it's like, I mean that's kind yeah, of that yeah. uh, we use uh, Rapana as as the, but if he if he just stays, 
Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, Mets no did man's the check. Land. Mets did yeah. the check and left, which is. See, I think he might have been going for up under there. He thought it was like a kind of that that tunnel ball look where you. Yeah. You know, I suppose we, we we've used it as um with with um Tane, yeah. Um, as a decoy, but it's kind of a no man's land still. Um, but yeah. Jeez, is that what some teams look like against us? Oh God, no. <laughs> 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 yeah that was that was pretty disappointing like when i when i watched that in real time i was just like i was pulling my hair out going like i don't know what read he was looking but yeah <clears throat> uh what's this one? Oh, this uh, is the try yep beautiful yeah, so this is pass from shawnee yeah yeah and that's kind of part of the the ch challenge with this system is that those passes are always deep because we have that diamond deep uh, V shape. Yeah. Um, but this is a pass that sometimes needs to be made. <clears throat> yeah. Love Rocco's early thought. Yeah, no, Rocco just, the... yep. Yep. Love it. Love it. Um, yeah, a bit of, yeah, uh, sorry. No, Dale back in the inside. Dale just awesome. Bro, how about Dallin, man? Talk, man just massive he... vidups. Yeah, legit. All right. Legit. He's unreal. He went to fullback Dal in this one. Yeah, I'm yeah. No, <laughs> look at Metcalf just sees it, eh? Just I love sees that. It. That's, I love that, just that kind of broken play. Mm -hmm. um, Improvised. Yeah, instinct. Speed. Hey, you're not beating Metz there. No way. Nah. Beautiful. But yeah, just Speed. I thought that was really cool. Hunted. And this is a Shex yep. try. Yeah, so Shex try now. Really. We're gonna get into that talk about fullback uh, and teamless. We're not mm. far off it, but yeah, this is just beautiful, man. Um, and I suppose we're gonna see a bit more, a bit more of um, you know what he can do. It's pretty um, individual this one too. Like this was just yeah, early. yeah. Oh, bro, that I like because I went. Like, I was coming up when I was playing footy. I was obviously never as good as RTS and all that, but like. I used to like, oh, bro. I'm pretty I close. I, was, I mean, I wasn't day. too far off. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't too far off. No. <laughs> Could have made it, you know, back in the day now. Nah. But um, like the sidestep was the only thing I usually had because I used to look up to people like Benji and Shawnee and all these boys, Carmichael Hunt. Yeah. I used to love that <clears> sidestep. RTS's sidestep is something I've never seen before. Like I love Shawnee's yeah, deception it's... and he's very, like he's got variables between his step. Sh like Sheck just has, he must have rockets in his calf. I don't, I don't know what it is, but he bounces so quickly one way to another like this, and it's so yeah. hard to cover. Like this one, he bounces back outside when running on an outside look. Like it, it and makes it just no holds. Sense. Yeah, look, it just yeah. holds strangely. Like he drops in, and then it's the old McInnes. Um, oh, <laughs> you know the old McInnes these? meme where he's like he's diving out. You know, the, <laughs> yeah. the around the world ones. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> The old I call it the McKinnis now. Whenever I see anyone diving <laughs> like that, I just call it the old McKinnis. And then Bro, that just the shoulders to kind of, yeah, <laughs> Detroit right foot hospital, left foot cemetery. <laughs> oh, I love it, love it. Um, I'm just saying, like just that, that, normal yeah. people did that, bro. ACLs are gone, like knees. Like uh, he must have strong as his. He's had an ACL problem back in the day, but like his knees must be amazing. I <laughs> oh, just one of those guys as well, like. Take, takes care of his body, all that stuff, yep. you know, like, but just, bro, that was a massive moment, I think. 100%. Um, desperately needed that. Um, 100%. I think it's my last clip. A um, little bit of Egan there from CHT. Mm, I know his service is really nice, too. too. Yeah, 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 Lustig as well. Too. They're all so trying, to, Egan. trying to, yeah, they're all good. But, 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 from what you've seen of CHT, where does he fit in? If if, if we learnt anything about his, where he's potentially, um, gonna be or, to me, I'll, you know I'll I mean? kind of wish there was a little bit more time to see it because I I think the last game <clears> it was like very very late on he came on, like I I like what I saw like I really did um in little moments and that but I I still don't see him being our fourteen cover all the time if that makes sense i i kind of yeah. would like to see him get back to cup and like get in that six role and especially if you know we do have shawnee or mets or something like that go down um i would love to see him as our next cover in that sort of realm and not worry too much about being a 14 and a hooker and really you know dive into that craft because obviously he's learning yeah. off egan we just saw before 
Like, I don't want him diving in too much into that craft. I'd like to see Lusick and Egan kind of get together on that one. Yeah. Hey, guys, we've got 61 people in here. Uh, whether that's on Twitter or various places, yeah, we appreciate you've been here. But if you are Thank here, you. give us a like, please. And if you're new, give us a subscribe. And if you're on Ash's page as well, guys, please give him a like, give him a subscribe. We appreciate you, you all coming and watching us here on All You Can Eat. Um, <clears throat> yeah, man. Uh, well, that's that's it, guys. That's the video analysis. No more Minecraft. You can <laughs> you can um, you can put your put your glasses back on or whatever you need to do. Um, freshen up. I know you've, you've, your eyes are probably taking you back to 1980, you know, Atari or Sega Master System there, but um, you're back into reality here. We're actually um, playing Rugby League 1 on PlayStation 2. <laughs> <laughs> Turn on me yeah. Rugby 95. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was uh, Francis Melly and all that running out there, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, very nice. Okay, let's do this team list, my man. Um, Yes, uh, obviously the new yeah RTS to start at fullback, Pompey into the left center position. Um, then we've got Egan listed. I think he he is going to play. Uh, then you've got uh, who else is coming? Marata is back. He's back. Woo! The big man is back. Dill Walker is back as well. Far out. Love that. Um, Love that. Yeah, and, and Bunty's holding that spot down over Ali and Jazz. Some interesting talking points there, brother. But let's start with RTS to fullback, man. Um, yeah, how will he play? How, and, and now we've got he's we've seen glimpses of it of the preseason. We saw in this game stepped up, scored a try, um, looked really good. Now we've got a full week of prep, um, that type of thing. How do you think he'll yeah. go um, for this Sunday's game? Just Nolan Sheck, bro. I think he's going to be incredible there. Like, I think obviously, you know, the biggest things I want to touch on with Sheck at the moment is like, I don't know if he's, I wouldn't say he's lost the ability, like catching off a massive, like a big bomb or something like that. It has been multiple moments already this year that he has yes. struggled under the high ball. <clears throat> so that will take time. Um, so hopefully, you know, within the, the period of him running at fullback this week and captain's run and all that sort of stuff, and we'll get some high balls under him that he gets back used to it. But just knowing just that daily end potential that he had, like, you know, he's he's going to be incredible there, especially with more uh, work rate. He's going to get through through the middle. Like, uh, I'm just, the momentum through the middle we're going to build with RTS there is going to be incredible because obviously the start of the season, he's been center. He's been posted on his center for a decent amount of the game. He likes to come in and get his work done. But um, him at fullback, you're going to see a lot more of him through the middle. Um, especially with that devastating footwork and, and these, you know, the Knights with Sa the Saifidi boys that are big bodies that aren't the best mobile movers. I'm really excited to see what could open up in this game here. Yeah, it's exciting to see him work so both sides of the park. I'll, yeah. I'll be concerned about his, his taking the high ball, defensive reads, um, and how much of a concern is it um, for a one-off game? Because we do expect uh, C&K back. <clears throat> Um, I think like, yeah. I think, yeah, I think, it, I think he's going to be like defensive reads for me. I reckon he'll be spot on with, cause I've always think that like, no matter what he's, he has that in his back pocket. Like he saw it when he moved to center, he understands and raises the game really well. Um, taking the ball out, out of a high ball or anything like that comes with repetition and like, you know, that will just come in repetition. So I'm, that's the only thing I'm kind of like sitting on, like, hopefully, the boys get a lot of reps into him in training um, and he gets comfortable just taking high balls and stuff like that because that's really where high balls come into play is like you take them more times than not. A lot of times you're going to take them because like Tain did amazing in that Raiders game uh, taking all those high balls as well. Like yeah. I, I, that was one part I thought he, you know, he's grown a lot. Um, but just the offense, the, the offensive ability that Shaq's going to have and have in this game is probably the, the big thing that we're going to be really, really excited about overall. So I'm very, very excited to see him with more ball in hand, of course. Yeah, you're just thinking they're going to have to be really strategic about how where they kick their balls and, and mm. the placement of them. Because you just, I mean, um, tane has been really good, and we've talked about how he's crazy. What he is. Yep. Right in the middle of the park, run, returning it or wherever it may be is just, like I, I said, it's like a death by a thousand stabs. Um, I said initially yep. paper cuts, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this bro. guy was almost like <laughs> he constantly gets on his front. So he constantly is like breaking the line. Um, mm -hmm. And just can you imagine the build up of our set plays um, sets once once he can get roam the field, should we say? Um, and especially um, yeah, I turn nine. Especially yeah, and the Egan nine, Adam at nine. Yep. Uh, yep. And having that deceptive, like you know, deceptiveness out of rock 
can pull one way, Sheck running off the inside of maybe Tohu or something like that. I can see that working really, really well. Yeah, fourth tackle kind of um, using a little bit of that support play. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, link play. Do you have a concern with link play? I mean, we obviously use our fullback a lot. Um, yep. Or do you think he'll be in the right spots? Everything should go reasonably well. I think like, you know, his ball playing is good. It's still yet to be seen, obviously, off the back of our set plays, you know, our double leads and stuff like that. I think the if he chooses to run first a lot, like he's going to get a lot of good looks there too. Like, you know, just off those double leads, there's going to be a lot of space for him just to really burn that inside defender and really create two minds. Um, it's just really, you know, him, yeah, maybe the ball playing is probably a little bit of like, you know, maybe we might look a little bit clunky as well there. Um, but, you know, with his running game, um, yeah, if he chooses to run first more so than not and just get through this game, um, I, I kind of, I'm, I'm looking at him being a more of a run first sort of fullback and those out, out the back looks will happen sometimes than not, if that makes sense. Yeah, good call by uh, Detroit as well, saying RTS out the back will almost always demand attention from two players. Mm. So I reckon a lot of front door players should work well. So that's probably a very double lead lines. Yep, Kate well. <clears throat> Maybe Kate well get a few touches there. Good call there, Detroit. Yep. Um, I also call. think maybe he's just getting him on the short side, like kind of broken mm. play, like we, what we just saw uh, there. Get um, get him out at first receiver, yep. working with you know uh, a center and a fullback uh, and a winger. See what he can yep. create. You know, like there's just heaps of options there, um, yep. and maybe we adjust a little bit of our game plan to to suit because we are very good from what I've seen is at being able to adjust for someone. Um, and exactly. add to the layers of, of attack. Uh, obviously, the AFB try last week was, was awesome. Yeah. So, yeah, I think we're overall confident, bro. Yeah, feeling good yeah, about maybe, that. Maybe I was a little bit too harsh too, obviously, with his ball playing and that, because we did see you know him that limited time in the trials uh, running with Ali uh, Leotar and that try that he set up there where he really just burnt that inside defender and really put him in two minds. So that could definitely work as well. So uh, it's a lot of That's a wait right. and see, obviously, but um, oh, just check knowing the athletic ability that he has he's a daily end winner in the past like he's gonna get it done and get it done really really well yep no absolutely um moving on to the um the the bench man uh well not the bench but the guys that are back you know starting five we're one short obviously with um with uh cnk not back yet but egan water walker and marata back mm. are we at full strength you know even <laughs> i suppose Ooh, close, with, um, to it. close to it yeah yeah and, and how how do we feel? Probably, I suppose we'll start with 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 Marata. He's the only one that hasn't played this season. What impact does he make coming into that bench role and impacting yep. the game? Yeah, hopefully, hopefully we um knowing Webby and maybe his game plans and all that sort of stuff. You know, uh, I I trust him. Webby is going to bring him on at the right moments to really bring momentum back into the game. Sort of the way similar ways he uses Dylan Walker. Um. Uh, Dylan Walker more so, you know, to speed up the ruck and that. I think Marata is just going to be a game changer to, you know, bring him on maybe together as a two-piece or something like that. Um, and just having like the, the ball playing a Dylan Walker with Marata just running those like deep lines um, it, with his speed and his, his power. I think that's where it, it hopefully it does change the game and continue on our momentum spurts because we've had what the last couple of games, our first 20 minutes has been bang, uh, other than the Melbourne game, obviously. Um, and then we kind of have a little dip in that. Uh, hopefully with boys like Marata and all that coming off the bench, we have a little bit more of like this. And then if we have a drop, bring him on, bang, get it back on there. Like we got class on the bench. That's a big thing as well. And um, It's class, yeah. 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 And yeah. we're starting to see maybe what, um, through the eyes of Webster, what he wanted to have to start the season as we kind of touched on preseason chats and stuff was, what is his bench? Like we got Lusik near Kore, um, a fire and Walker, and that's pretty much with most of those bench players like all healthy, if that makes sense. So this is probably what he preferred to look from the preseason. Yeah, and and, and actually, you you may see some changes in terms of um, it could be Marata might be first into change instead of Bunty. Mm. Maybe maybe they hold Bunty back till the last you know last twenty or something. Twenty, yeah, yeah. There's there's options there. Um, but yep. good good word in terms of class class players um uh, make an impact i mean you talk about barnett um pulled barnett off a little early just maybe just to um keep the momentum going a little bit put bunty on and then when things kind of maybe leveled off brought barnett back on and in, in, in instant impact, impact you know and that's what we're talking about with marata 
Webby's got that freedom now to make a call. Okay, I'm going to pull off Barnett or AFB. I've got Marata. He's going to make some damaging runs. He's going to be tight on defense. He's going to, you know, be really good at defensive reads. Oops, yeah. Well went down. Okay, I've got Marata. He's class. I can put him out the back row like he was last year. Oh, exactly. them and centers down. Marata go out there. Kate will stay where you are. You know, there's just so much. So yeah, good looks. call. Like a good depth. It was um, and then like yes, you see Warriors saying that might be Marata now playing off of Tohu, and you exactly. might get a bit more of a bite on that than the outside opens up. So there's just like we're all talking about really good stuff. Um, yeah, yeah. Oh, um, the depth, bro. Oh. Yeah, depth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what what's your thoughts on uh, on Egan? Um, mm -hmm. probably much been two or three weeks out now. Yep. Um. Do you feel it just comes back, you know, full of, like like nothing was missing? He, he never left, or is it kind of just sort of working himself back? And what might be his minutes? Do you think um, how how might they play this out? I think the minutes will very much look very similar to the Sharks game. To be honest, in my opinion, uh, more so because of the injury, and I think they're going to ease him in. Um, obviously, you know, they started that game. Egan got through a ton of work, and then we brought him off for Lusick. Um, and then Lusick obviously had to come back on later on because of Egan's injury and stuff like that. I feel like it's going to be very similar. We may see probably what, oh, I would hang around that 50, 60 role for Egan, maybe less. Um, Lusick's been doing a decent job there, but like now having Lusick in that 14, he's not going to be that explosive 14 that's going to carry on that momentum. And that's kind of like where I'm going to sit now. I wouldn't be surprised. Like, I don't think he will, but if we start with Lusick and then inject Egan, like, especially yeah. coming back with his injury and stuff like that, it probably wouldn't hurt to go that way. Um, but, yeah, it's really a wait and see, really minutes-wise, and how he actually looks, especially coming back off a, an injury off an arm, which is very vital, obviously, in, in that hooking role. So hopefully he's yeah. gone there full health and ready to go. Yeah, I like the the, the idea, and shout-out to Detroit saying, thought um, Egan yeah. coming off the bench, possibly. It could, it actually could happen. I mean, if, we've seen that before in terms of, what was it, the Panthers game when he came back from injury last year um, at Magic, and last exactly. started. Um, I think what the benefit of Egan starting is that he gets AFB, Barnett, Tohu fresh, yeah, and just can build off of that really quickly. I mean, if you, yeah. say, if you get Egan coming off the bench and, you know, you have Bunty and, and Ali, you know, not just take Marat out for now. You're not mm -hmm. gonna get maybe the same, you know, because those 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 are the guys. What Egan, Sean, um, Barnett, AFB, Tohu, those five guys, mm -hmm. yeah, really in tune with each other. You know, like they are setting up their shape. You know, um, everything. So I suppose you, you kind of want to maximize that first window there. Um, but I, I, you know, for for the sake of like um, impact, I think I'd love to see him come off the bench as well. But that might be the argument for why he starts. Do you know what I mean? Exactly, exactly. Like sort of like setting his blueprint as well in the game because I feel like Lusik, uh Egan does very well with like he'll give certain looks early in the game and he'll come back to him later on and figure out what he holes he opens up. He kind of yep. loses that a little bit if he comes off the bench and just as a spark player off the bench. So I do agree with you a little bit there. Um, it just really comes down to like how bad of an injury and how hampered he could be like hopefully he's full health obviously but footy players man like they play through a little bit just to get back in in early yeah. and all that so maybe uh well it's a wait and see sort of look but um i could see both arguments honestly it i i i pros i prefer egan playing a decent amount of minutes but it really comes down to that injury bro yeah 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 <clears throat> um walker back as well which is mm. just great um a week off i i think he just continues on Love um, that. Great to have him back. I yeah. I mean, actually, I forgot about Walker. I mean, if you maybe brought Egan and Walker off the bench, oh, actually, now I'm changing my mind. I forgot about yeah. Walker. So if you had Egan, Injection. Walker, and, and Morata, okay, there's, you know, I, I feel that. So actually, there's both. Yeah, I can see both sides of the argument. Actually, yeah, yeah. Um, um versatility, bro. The the versatility, squad, yeah, yeah. Uh, Tay saying Pumps looking... has a year of communication with Mont, so it's possibly the confidence factor. Yeah, sorry, bro. Go, brother. Yeah. Yeah, no, we're probably, um, you're probably looking at too, if you're looking at our full squad, because I was really, really curious on like when Nia Korda comes back, like um, who's going to hold on to that bench role out of like a Foa, Jazzy um, and Ale, like who's going to be that front runner to be that other guy? Because for me, Walker, 
seemed like a nailed on. Uh, Nia Corder was a nailed on for me on the bench. Freddie has now become the nailed on because <clears> the way, um, you know, um, Webby has could have gone into the season. Uh, who was going to be that player? And Ofoa really holding on to that spot instead of like Jazzy. I kind of agree with it a little bit. Like if I'm looking at the bench, if we had Jazzy there, do we run? A lo- it, it, does it look a little bit too small? Like it, I know mm. like those boys can play in the middle and stuff like that, but they have like a bit of a size with Bunty. Like I think Ale could have covered that as well, but maybe Ofoa with the more experience, um, maybe is probably more of a look there, but um, overall yeah. maybe Dylan Walker and Jazzy are becoming more of the interchange. If, Walker's out, Jazzy comes in. If Jazzy comes yeah, in, yeah, I think it's kind Jazzy of that thing. I, well, I think Ali is definitely that Marata type impact guy. Yeah. Well, now that Marata's back, I think Webby's gone with like, a, okay, I'm going to get 10 minutes of pure defense out of Bunty here yep. just to stem the tide a little bit. And then I'm going to bring Marata on. Yep. I think that's what he's kind of wanting right now. Um, oh, let's answer this question from Detroit while we're here. Uh, what do you guys, what do you honestly rank our four pack when fully healthy? I think it is sitting top three, Def's top five. Us, Panthers, Broncos, and even Eels have a solid four pack plus Manly. Um, even the Raiders, too. The Raiders got a really yeah, strong four pack. Yeah, they are, they are. Um, what's, what's your thoughts on that one? Um, it's it's kind of it's tough. Like uh, you got to give the props to the Panthers forward pack over the years and years and years. So if we're going like championship pedigree and all that, like the Panthers win out um, no matter what. The Broncos probably have the most talented pack in the competition, especially with Payne Haas, Paddy Carrigan. Like we're looking at like world class yeah. talents and all that. Um, Eels are really really solid. Like especially having someone like Maddo coming off the bench and like. And then you have Manly as well. I'd probably say we're still probably about top three. Um, yeah. Just because, you know, Adam Fennell Blake for me is like a top three prop in the game right now. Um, Mitch Barnett for me is so, so good. You got like Tahu, that's got to be top. Where would uh, top four? It'd be top four, top five lock in the competition right now. Like you have yeah, Paddy still, Carrigan, yeah. Cam Murray. Like he's up there for sure. Yeah. Um, and if you add in bench to our rotation there, it wasn't just starting forwards. Like I, I like the looks of like Murata and, and Walker as a forward pack too. So I'm going to say top, I, I think we still hold a top three forward pack in the league, but it's definitely tight this year, especially with the Raiders yeah. that have an amazing forward pack. The Eels have an amazing forward pack. Um, yeah, that sort of look. I, I think it's around there. I think it's definitely around there. I think if you look at the totality, adding the capo element and you're mm-hmm. getting Murata now off the bench, yeah. um, and I know Blumen, what's his name, was big on Marat off the bench. Old um, Anton, remember he talked a bit yeah. about you know that in, in, impact at Para. I think yeah, if you round it out with the bench included, the four pack adding Walker, Marata, um, and that, and then you got Egan obviously is the main guy. Um, yep. Yeah, bro, it is top three, top five. At worst, top five. And and yeah, worst maybe top five. Um, and I think our guys are very experienced. We've got an experienced put forward pack. Yep. Um, but totally. Yeah, no, I agree with a lot of what he's saying there, Detroit. Um, but, yeah, let, we're going to move on. We'll get to questions like that if, if we can, guys. And appreciate you guys in the chat coming through. We are trying to post some up as quickly. But we've got 76 people in here. Love 76, it, 76s. So Joel and Beans. <laughs> Joel Trust the and process. <laughs> Mr. No um, MVP this season. No oh, MVP. Guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we won't get into basketball, but um, yeah, there's 76 <laughs> of you guys in here, but please um, give us a, a like and a subscribe. And if you are on Ash's page as well, fill up those likes and those subscribes. And then, guys, if you are here at Wilds of TV, go over to Asher Thomas's channel as well and subscribe there. Um, but yes, uh, we're gonna we will get into your guys' questions as, as much as we can. Um, the next the next topic, Pompey, the big pomps, mm, big pomps. And is the question may be is Leia Toa not ready, or is this more about Pompey? Yeah, what's your thoughts on this one? Yeah, I I think this is more on Pompey's end. Uh, also being a left side center playing in that left side, I feel like it was a straight swap there because most of the time, whenever I've seen Ali play, he's usually on that right side center. Um, he, especially in cup this year, he's been playing right side center. Bomp's been still on that left side. I think it was just a straight swip, le- uh, swap left side center for left uh, left side center. Bring Bompe in, and he was there last year. He um, didn't put a foot wrong really. Like he, you know, all year he's 
uh, he never got injured, like played every, every minute and availability is the best ability overall. Um, whether we wanted impacts more so like Ali for me would have been more of like bring him on. Cause he's going to be that impact sort of center. Like he's going to really bring something special where bumps is like a guy that's sturdy and does a job and like, you know, gets for his post-contact meters and all that. Um, yep. But yeah, like I feel like it's more so the the experience he's been there, and he's a left side center, so it's a straight swap for me. That's really where I'm seeing Webby really put his eyes here. Here, yeah, I'm pretty much the same. I think um, I settled on Pompey. I, I actually, I actually didn't mind either. But um, mm. from what we've just talked about, Montoya, <laughs> yeah. he might get done. Montoya might be doing a blimmin' E Honda soon. He might be flying here, but <laughs> he just doesn't trust this guy. He just panics. I'm no, no, no. I'm gonna. Try. <laughs> He might dive in on the Saifidi boys or something next week, bro. I don't know what's going on there. The ball's still at the ruck, the play ball in the middle of the field, and he's just started running in for no reason. (laughs) And New Zealand type thing. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. But I think that's a good point. Like, it's it's, it's literally just because I think he's, yeah, trust issues. He's got daddy issues. He's got Um, trust issues. (laughs) We've got a good Pompey there. And it's a one off um, game. And, um, you know, yeah, yeah, very good. Agree with you, Detroit, there. Um, and Pompey's experience got him in there, Jacko. Yeah, good call. Mm. Um, but yeah, I think I think he'll go well. Um, I think yep. he he's he, he he's got that nature about him. He's not too high, not too low. You know, Pompey's he's, he's very just kind of stays in the middle. Um, exactly. Yeah, we know in terms of pace and that type of thing. You know, he's not he's not the fastest guy. We know that, but what he does yeah. with his size, um, defensive reads. Has good carries too, you know. Um, yep. you know, some of his carrying is really good. So, no, I'm happy with that. I'm I'm, I'm pretty 100%. happy with that. Hundred percent. I think he'll do a job, bro. Um, as the boys are still pointing out, you know, like Gagai, he he handled Gagai pretty well, uh, fairly well in those final series or whatever. So, um, he can do a job against really good centers. It's just obviously, um, <clears throat> yeah, we just want to see him get in, get in, do have no errors, no problems, and just get out and do do his work. RTS back in that center and. Uh, yep. Chancey back there, hopefully next week at fullback. Yeah, and Bryce Drew saying, if Mars can stop trying to solve every outside break by himself, I think he'll do enough to keep there right here. Yeah, he's just got to kind of <laughs> trust his man. Stand yeah, by your start. man. Yeah, he's just got <laughs> yeah. to stand by, stand by Pompey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Stand Stay by with me, guys, if I do have to, have to sing a tune. Just Was that certain that lyrics coming me. out, brother? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, but yes, um, uh, will Pompey take over the kick? I think they'll stick with Metcalf. I think. Me um, too. Yeah. Did you hear too what uh, the happening about that too, my bro? With, um, no. What was apparently it? Shawnee having carrying a um an injury or what, uh, due to that's why Mets has been kicking. I think it was a a quad injury or something. A quad like nothing major. It's just he yeah. um gave up the kicking duties because of that. So um yeah. whether Shawnee will pick it back up later on in the season it depends on how Mets goes obviously with the, his kicking and that which I think he's been pretty solid at he hasn't been amazing and he hasn't been too bad either like, yeah he's, he's kind of he's kind of he's kind of in that in that vein there uh we'll mm. get to this question here where Jacko's just pulled it up um why are our hookers not kicking I know Lusick has a top-notch kicking game but he must have been told to let SJ do all the kicking uh, yep. I'll just get maybe my thought, and then I'll give pass it over to Ash. Yeah, it is a it is a kind of an untapped thing. Um, I think a lot of the time, yeah, just the kind of a dependency on Sean. I mean, they want to get to that that bomb on you know when they get to their forty or the fifty meter line, they want to get to that bomb to set that defensive uh, pressure. Pretty- yeah, I think that's that's pretty more what I'm thinking, but um. Yeah, what's your what's your thoughts? Why aren't we using even Lustig? He's got a decent kicking game. Yep. What what is that? What's the reason for that? I think you hit an nail on the head, bro. I think every team's got different game plans and different uh, strategies in coming into games. And obviously, Webby has really noted that we are trying to take out a lot of the um the big stronging uh, strong outside backs from each team with a uh, fifth tackle kick or fourth tackle kick. A uh, bomb from Shawnee. It's really tough, obviously, to do a bomb from a hooker. Um, I I do agree. I do love seeing like you know players like obviously Marnie, 
and all that. Played for the doggies. Um, Lockie Croker is really good for it with Manly, like a 40 20 and stuff to kind of really yeah. like switch it up out of, out of hooker and that. Um, but I think it's more of a game plan thing. I think, you know, Webby is just trusting in like, you know, him, uh, Shawnee and Metcalf just to put like that, you know, when they're about 30, 40 out, put it up in the air so that winger doesn't have a, a good run up and that to get through the line or doesn't carry in that next carry off it. Like yeah. we did with Xavier Coates and it really showed out for most of that game. Just unfortunately, Xavier Coates has something in his back pocket for late of that last game with Melbourne. So, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. But like with teams like the Panthers and stuff, I think, you know, Webby's game plan really suits, especially against someone like a Brian Toto that does a lot of his really bad, like de damaging work off, you know, that second tackle run. Um, if we can get under him really early and really stop him from getting those, you know, off the ruck sort of runs, uh, it limits them a little bit, you know what I mean? So uh, the Panthers will still run Taylor May and all that, 100%, but... I think it's more of a game plan thing. Yeah, I, I think so too. And just quickly on this one, is it just me or Lusik not darting out of dummy half at all? I can't remember him doing that last. I don't think he's doing any of that. Um, but I noticed some things where he's doing across the ruck passes. He, he, uh, he's just not there right now. Um, yeah. He's learning. And, and he's learning. Yeah. Kiwi Raider, thank you, man. Uh, coming in from Ash's page. Uh, Rocco versus Best is going to be, yeah, we're going to get into the combined 17 uh, pretty much right now. Um, but just, off. yeah, yeah, Rocco's spot on with his kick chase. Yeah, and that's it. It's a model. It's a style. This is what they want to do. Yep. Um, Jacko's saying, yes, there was a prime example last week when Lassa got clean ruck ball just inside our 40-meter line with a gap to try a 40-20, which I know he can do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, I mean, it's I, I agree with you, Jacko. I think there's... We should be trying to keep the defense off balance, the fullbacks off balance. Um, for whatever reason, I'm not sure what it is. Could be a trust issue. Webby doesn't feel, you know, maybe he'd rather Sean with 80% accuracy on his on his bomb landing yeah. within the right over a Lusik one time maybe bombing. I don't know. I don't, I'm just I'm just theorizing there, but I uh, hope that answers your your question, man. But um. Look, we're gonna we're gonna jump ahead and get into this combined seventeen. Uh Ooh. if you guys yeah, so Waz V Knights. Um what are we round four now? Yes, Jeez. round four. Yeah. Round four. Season's going quick, brother. It, it it is, man. It is. It is. <laughs> it definitely is. It's it's flying by. Um but yes, uh let's get into this. Uh let me pull this that up. This one's tough, bro. This one's tough. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll, fo I'll follow your lead. I mean, you know, you know that you know the um, you know the knights. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. You're gonna we'll see how we go. First match up, bro. Our first match up, bro. <laughs> Don't do this to me, bro. And Roger T. Russell <laughs> Shed versus Kalen Adeli M. Cheating Ponga. No, nah, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, I go uh, go Ponga here. It's just yeah. in this situation, I think it's just Ponga. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. If we're going like um RTS, probably what 2018, 2019 RTS. I'm going RTS, but yeah. we're going off consist like what he's been doing lately in that, and yes. Ponga yeah, is exactly. such a vital part we're, to that Knights team. Yeah, yeah. We're not doing a an you know an all time like over yeah. the thing of their career. We're talking right now. Yeah, uh, what Ponga does for his team. Um, you just got to give it to him in the situation. And RTS has been training as a center, so no, I think it's a simple one. Um, happy to move so on. Tough there. The names, bro. Those names are so big. <laughs> <laughs> um, KP. Yeah, yeah, KP for sure. Um, okay, so what we did last time, we did the best right-sided winger. So it's Dallin, mm. and who's their right-sided winger? Is it, is uh, it Jenkins? Thomas Jenkins? Yeah, Tommy Jenkins. Yeah. Man, I love Dallin, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> you remembered. <laughs> oh, no. No, well, I what can you tell Dallin me about this one? Yeah, we gotta go Dallin. But anything on Tommy Jenkins there? Great player, um, man. Good little player. Come from the um, Panthers. Had a lot of raps coming in up for grades and stuff like that. Um, New South Wales Cup. Just tackle break ability that he has. More so a center that's been playing on the okay. wings here for the Knights. Like every time I saw him in Cup, he was playing center for the for the Panthers and that. Got a ton of potential, but with the Knights running, having no Greggy Marju and that. Um, obviously Thomas Jenkins, um, obviously no Dommy Young too. Thomas Jenkins is being on that right wing instead of Anari Tuwala on this side, but great player, just, uh, not on Dell's level at the moment. That's okay. All. Yeah, no, absolutely. We're giving that one to our man Dell's. 
Um, left. Uh, we'll go right centre. Rocco yep. Berry versus. Uh, uh, Dang, gay guy. Be... Gay guy's a red centre. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. Mm. Ooh. Tough one, that one, bro. Very tough. Gay guy with experience. <clears throat> uh, Rocco on the come up, finding mm. his kind of place. Rocco's yep. having a great start to the season. I haven't watched much gay guy. Is he? How's he tracking? He's been um, good. He's been good. Yep. Like he, he hasn't been like uh, out of this world and all that. But had a decent game in that storm game. That first half he had, I looked like I thought he was going to be in for a massive night. Um, had a decent night, obviously. Um, yep. For me, out of these two, like you know, Rocco is still building and still growing. I love Rocco, and he's got such a big potential to be. You know, better than someone like not better, but like be up and like dang gag guys level and that. But I, I got to choose gags. Like gags has done it on yep. like you know the origin stage has done all that. Um, Rocco, Rocco will be there though. Like Rocco's kick chase is just enormous for us. His defense is enormous. You see, the attacking, it will come. Like he will come. He's got such a good attacking base on him. It's just obviously he's running in a system at the moment. So um, go on, yep. gag, uh, dang gag guy there. Okay, and who do you think will have the better game? And this one, yeah. um, I would say uh, Rocco. Yeah. I would say Rocco. Yeah, yeah. I think Bombs can do a decent job on gags. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So interesting there. Interesting there. Yeah. Um, I'm going to back my man Rocco there. Um, yeah, I like it. I like it. Uh, I'll, I'll, maybe if you're happy with the draw. Yeah. I don't know what it is. I just, I just feel he's come up enough to maybe that they're maybe on par. Now, I may be way off, but I haven't watched much gay guy, but I know he's got the experience, but I'm taking right at this very this moment. Season. Yeah. Yeah, right at this very moment. I'm going to go Rocco there. And if, if, we, if you're happy with the draw. Yep. 100%. Okay. I'm happy with the draw well, well, there. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Rocco's Just on had a better bit. season so far. Yeah. But, um, yeah. you know, gags overall, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely that. overall. Yeah, yeah. No, no, cool. We'll, go, we'll give that one the draw. Mm -hmm. um, Pomps, Pomps versus Bradman Best. Yeah. Both left side. <laughs> yeah. Ah, uh, love you, Pomps. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I love you, Pomps. But uh, got to be Braddy Best. Um, you know, I still, I still, I still think Brad, Bradman Best still has consistency issues. He's a great player. Like when he's on, he's really a tough to handle. Uh, but he's still young and he's still learning. Um, to stay consistent in the game and really inject himself as much as he can. He's to me in that like Katoni Stags mold where I'd love to see him get more hands on the ball and get through yeah. a lot more work. But because of the, how that left side's uh, shaped and KP does a lot of work with, you know, Bradham and all that, he's got to keep his edge as much as he can. Um, so, but when he touches the yeah. ball, man, he's incredible. So I, I got to go Braddy there. Uh, even though I love bombs, but yeah, got to go yeah. Braddy. Hey, Bryce, um, just for, for clarification, what we are doing here, I know it's um, Pomps vs. Gay Guy, but we're kind of doing the best in each position. So left, yeah. center, right, center. Just so you know, we're not doing matchups as such. Um, yeah. But yeah. Um, yeah. Best. Got to go with, with Bradman there okay, as well. Nice. Um, Montoya vs. Tuala. Mm. Um, Tuala's game, how's he been going this year? Um, in and out of like, he's starting to get a consistent spot because there's no Dommy Young this year. But even then, Thomas Jenkins probably will keep him out of spot. I'm guessing when Greggy Marju comes back, uh, it's really yeah, up yeah. to those two. I love Chuala. Like I, again, I don't know, that's starting to be my catchphrase and that, but <laughs> no, no. I've watched a lot of Chuala coming up through the grades and that. And, um, you know, I, at one stage thought he was going to be like a bolter to be like, uh, someone that comes into that Maroon squad. I didn't think it was going to be a winger for him, but be around that squad i think he was at one stage um but i don't know whether the knights just didn't have him in favor for a little bit obviously he's not like the most crazy explosive winger of all time and all that yeah. um but he's a great defensive winger and does really good work in defense uh, a lot of his best works on defense in my opinion but out of this matchup bro like i'm going monty like monty's work out of the back end is like leaps and bounds over Tuala's, in my opinion yeah, yeah. No, I'll go Monty as well. Uh, yeah. I've seen a little bit of Tuala over the, over the years, but I, I feel Montoya's definitely got that. Um, Metcalf, uh, oh, we're just going best halves. Mm, I like so, that. So, Sean, for me, definitely wins the one of the spots. 100%. Uh, now, look, Metcalf versus Gamble and, and Cogger. Where are we at? 
Um, and where does Metcalf sit in that kind of, yeah, amongst that hierarchy? For me, like, I see a lot of people really, really high on Cogger. And obviously, it's coming off being that Panthers fill-in. Yes. Yeah. Um, played amazing in the grand final to really unlock uh, Nathan Cleary to have his massive moment and all that. Um, I, I, I don't know what it is, and I could be completely wrong on Cogger all the way through, but he just reminds me of Sean O'Sullivan, like a player that has been an in-and-out sort of player for a long time. The Panthers have really made him into an amazing half in that system. But out of that system, even though Sean O'Sullivan had a decent year last year with the Dolphins, I, it's still Sean O'Sullivan to me, and it's still Jack Cogger to me, if that makes sense. So out of all yeah. of them, the potential-wise, I'm going Luke Metcalf. Like I, I think that that halves pairing pairs a lot better because Jack Cogger is a bit more of a halfback than a yeah. six, where I think Metzke is a lot more suited to being that running six. Um, so yeah, for me, I got Johnson and Metcalf, but that could be a little bit controversial to some people, but that's just me in my eyes. Yeah, interesting here, and Jacko's even and mentioning it here as well, is that Cogger is lucky to hold a spot. And interesting how guys that can mm. fit so well in the Panthers system, you know what I yep. mean? Yep. Just insane how when these guys go on their own, you know, they're just, they're just um, you know, your, your, your normal player. Um, and like, I'll, yeah. I'll put it this way too, like um, I was, you know, you know, with everything that happened with me and all that, but I was planning to like even talk about it or make a video on it or something like that, but... I just didn't, this is the biggest thing I had against the Knights. If you had checked out my ladder prediction and all that, like the Knights were a team that floated outside the eight, I do think from memory. And the biggest reason was they signed Jack Cogger. He had all his hype from a grand final, but Jackson Hastings was amazing for him last year and the way he unlocked yeah. KP. And within three weeks, they've shifted him out and it's going to be a merry-go-round. They can't get their combinations together. I understand like KP is the biggest thing in this team, but if you you got to have a combination between all these boys and like really have trust in all, all like you know if you're gonna drop anyone like I love Gamble but like you'd probably drop Gamble out but to drop Jacko like that was really tough. Yeah, I like Hastings game too. Um, yeah, I like the way he plays. Yeah, I'm with you. I'll, I'll go and I had Metcalf above Gamble amongst the five eights. Hundred percent. So definitely, um, I'll give our halves that. Well, let's let's backtrack here. We gave one to Ponga. Um, one to Dallin, that's one apiece. Draw. Uh, with, yep. With, um, yep. And um, best one, that one. Best one, that one. Um, Monty. Monty. Yeah, so that's – and then Metcalf. So that's one, two, three, um, four – so there was it four two one maybe is that what right I can't you know, yeah yeah maybe count. yeah well a three a three two a yeah three two or a four one because they got that draw obviously with uh, Dane Gaga and that so yeah um, yeah but yeah so well, let's go so there's one to them one to us to Dylan draw one 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 okay then um, we gave um, what was it yeah one to them so it's was it two one yeah, two, two, one with Montoya. Three, two, one, four, two, one. Yeah, four, two, one. Yeah. Uh, to us. Yeah. Okay. Let's go Ooh. through to the the forwards now. AFB versus Saifiti. Jacob. Mm. Um. <laughs> yeah. What's your thoughts? Uh, are we doing uh, the best props? Starting props. Yeah. Yeah, we'll probably yeah. we'll 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 go with the best props and that, and um, it yeah. doesn't change really my decision. We're going off right now, right now. Yeah. Um, I'm having ads and Barnett over. Um, I Sophie, would too. Yeah, Sophie I think it's boys. pretty. Yep. Yeah, I felt it's like Sophie boys had a lot of potential early on in their career, but for some reason they've just gone a bit wayward, and I think it's a lot with the Knights. Um, where Barnett, like, if he was still at the Knights, maybe Barnett would have been in the outers still anyway. But like when we got him, we've molded him to such. Yeah, a we've good turned him around. Player. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. and like I was saying, math, same math. <laughs> the brain ain't working, brother. Appreciate, appreciate <laughs> yeah, you yeah, bearing yeah. with that. You probably did the thing straight away, and we were like, you're waiting for, <laughs> waiting for us to catch up to you, brother. Sorry, Lake, we're giving you Minecraft and now maths equations. It's not what you came here for. <laughs> the stream's um, lagging. <laughs> the stream's lagging now. Um, yeah, we apologize, brother. Um, <laughs> yeah, Jacko Jackson Ford again has kept kept repeating this comment. Ford over for sale all day. He just got it on repeat. We get it. We'll get there, mate. And when you're there, we'll pull it up, okay? 
Oh, no, we appreciate we appreciate you <laughs> we appreciate yeah, you jack and paul jack and a jacko they're all coming together I... <laughs> yeah they're both jackos they're women tag team um yeah that's simple for me um don't need to talk too much but uh egan versus crossland yeah nice matchup nice matchup um decent matchup yeah the thing with these matchups is i feel as though like the crosslands the brayleys they're playing longer minutes at the moment than him mm. the, the harry grants and we're kind of weighing towards those guys. Yeah. Um, is that fair? Or was uh, is, are we disrespecting Wade Egan a bit here? I'm going Egan over Crossland. Yeah. All day. Cool, 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 yeah. cool, cool, cool. 100%. 100%. I think um, the biggest thing that holds Egan back in a lot of arguments is definitely, you know, the minutes and his injuries and stuff like that also. But, like, um, just taking that into account, like, I – Crossland still has a lot of errors in his game. I feel like he tries really, really hard. Um, I think he's a good hooker, like a good player to have on your team and that. But I think Egan, skill-wise, is leaps and bounds above uh, Phoenix Crossland. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm with you there. I just wanted to point that out. Sometimes the argument is 100%. that because these guys play 80, it somehow warrants them better than – I don't – when I when I disagree with that as well. But you can yeah. get into that – falling into that temptation that, oh, no, oh man, Egan is – but no, don't think about minutes. Think about impact. Yeah. Um, and quickly, Bryce say, Grieve saying, I'd like to get one of the Saifidi brothers to the Waz. We would get them to their true potential. Oh, good call there. Good shout there. It'd be um, interesting. It'd be interesting. Yeah. And Egan to make the Kiwis. <laughs> get, on the citizen, get on the citizen train. Uh, I like that. Um, yeah, let's move on to um, uh, back row here. Here you go, Jackson. You want to put your comment you up go. now? <laughs> yeah, bring it on now. <laughs> Jackson Ford all day. <laughs> um, what, so in all seriousness, where, um, where, where is this one sitting for you? Frizzell, um, oh sorry, we do we doing yeah? Is he the left? So left. So Frizzell usually plays. On Are we the doing right best side. back row play? Just best back row, or are we doing left? Yeah, we'll just side go best. Row? We'll just go best back row. Okay, we'll just cool. go best back row. And for me, um, like I, I, I get the ja the Jacko call, but like Frizz, if we had Frizz, like I, I would love. I know he's getting older and that, but Frizz still has a ton of like punch. And just that yeah. that that experience, like Jacko's still got to grow. That's the biggest thing. Jacko is going to be incredible, and his work rate's incredible. But Frizzell gets through the work rate, but also has a little bit more punch, in my opinion. So I'm swaying Frizzell uh, and Capewell, okay. in my opinion. But Frizzell and Capewell, your thoughts? Okay. Yeah. Kai Pispool is good, but like he's still young to the game. He's still got a young, ton of potential. Yeah, 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 ton of but potential. But like out of all of it, it's those three: it's Jacko, Frizzell, or Capewell, for me. And for me, it's Capewell and Frizzell. Okay, yeah, yeah, I can see that. I can see that. <laughs> Sorry, Jackson Ford. Okay. We we're talking ill of you. Um, but oh, far out. I'm not going to really argue that. I don't, I'm going to mm. just stay out of that one. I'm going to let them have that one. Yeah. Um, for yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what it is, but I think Jacko's like he probably could beat Frizzell, beat up Frizzell. Yeah. But it's just we're just talking little errors here and stuff like that. But no, nah, I, I I think. If we talked about if this was a game, maybe later on in the, in the year, yep. I think we're probably going Jackson Ford. But yeah, yeah I don't know. match up for match up, maybe. But like, if I'm thinking of like, if someone was to build a team right now, if the Blues were to select right now, who would fill in for an edge back roll roll out of Jacko and and Frizzell? I think Frizzell's obviously work rate, what he's done back in the day and all that, but also he's still got that now, and I think he does that a lot for the Knights. It just goes unwarranted sometimes. Did I hear Jacko's a smoky for <laughs> today? He's, <laughs> he's building up, mate. He's building up. Mate. <laughs> no, um, no. Get out of here, Ash. <laughs> Sorry, oh, Jacko. Oh, my man. Oh, Jacko. Sorry, no, Freddy. Man. That's Jacko. <laughs> yeah, Fred. yeah, 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 yeah. We're not sure who it is. Yeah, and, and prove them wrong, Tahi. Tahi's saying, prove them wrong, Jackson. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, 100%. Absolutely. But if you actually did think of it, man, a Frazelle at the Warriors. Oh, that would actually look nice right now. I, I It'd be feel gnarly, like he'd right? do, well, do well in the system. Yeah, yeah, I think he would. Mm. Um, yeah, let's move on to um, lock Tohu versus Adam Elliott. Mm. Watch old Ash bring out his catchphrase again, brother. I love <laughs> Adam Elliott. <laughs> I love me some Adam Elliott. 
But we've got to go with Tohu. Like, Tohu is incredible, man. What Tohu nah. has done for our club and just as a captain, bro, like, I don't think there's an argument here. Um, Elliot's incredible and does these high work rate type of player, gets for a ton of work, and, like, it would be incredible to have him at the Warriors and all that, but he wouldn't start at 13 at the Warriors over Tohu, and that's the no, way. No, no, no way. One. Yep, no, it's an easy one. Tohu, for sure. The, I mean, we all know about him and what he does for the club and as captain as well. And remember yeah. this guy was bad was kind of people didn't want him as a captain mm. um you know what i mean and and the way he does his captaining he's very smart with his talking to the refs you know all that type of thing um I, i've put him above mannering in terms of if he won a premiership yeah uh, i think he'd, he'd, he'd uh, some people have men over mannering right now i think we're gonna have to do we're gonna have yeah. to do an all-time bro me and you yeah, an because i'd love stage, to have yeah. that chat sometime that yeah, i'd love yeah. that Yes, yes, yes. Um, and, and Khan's saying, don't forget about us. <laughs> Khan's holding me hostage here. He wants me to get everything <laughs> over onto Spotify from my YouTube. Because um, I've abandoned my Spotify. If you guys don't know, I used to do Waza podcast. But I'll try my best to get over there, Khan, and send me all the chat. Um, because Khan wants to listen to and wherever he can. But, oh, thank you. For, don't worry, for, uh, Khan. I'll talk to this man. Uh, <laughs> we, might, we might do something. Or, uh, we'll see. We'll um, see. Don't, oh, oh, oh. No promises, but um, we'll see how we we'll go. We'll try our best. Elliot's wife would make more impact. <laughs> really, is a girl. Who's his wife? I didn't need to be <laughs> said. Is <laughs> she playing NRLW or something? Yeah, bro. And she's a killer. <laughs> she's exactly what he says she is. <laughs> I'd have her Good over shot, the Saifidi boys. No. <laughs> <laughs> Good shout, bro. It's Good to love it. Love it. Um, yeah, Tohu for sure. Um, let's move now into the bench. Now, guys, we do bench. We do the best four players. Um, yep. So... Um, we've got from our side Lusik, New Quarter, a four Walker versus mm -hmm. Brayley, Croker, Hetherington, Brody Jones. Okay, let, let, who's your who's your first pick? Out of all these guys here, my first pick, like Jaden Brayley is incredible. The only thing that holds him back is like his health. Uh, he's yeah. like very so similar to Wade Egan, but like probably a lot more worse with like ACLs and that really big damaging injuries. Because he's an incredible player. He I'd have Dylan Walker, yeah. though, at 14. Like, Dylan Walker would still yep. be my 14 overall. Yeah. Um, that would be the first one I'd look at. Um, yeah. Then off the back of that, uh, I think the next best out of all these names is Murata. Yeah. Uh, he's got to have near Cordero there. Um, even though we haven't seen a lot of him off the bench yet, like, being in that middle role. But I just think he's going to be incredible. He's just a, a classy player. Yeah. Then off the rest of them, I would probably... Have Jaden Braley still maybe as like a hooker yep. cover? Him yep. coming off the bench with Egan yeah, would I agree with be it. incredible. Would be incredible. Yep. I agree. And then the last one, this one's really tough for me. Like, I didn't, I know we've had Jack Hetherington before. Yeah. I've always loved what Jack Hetherington brings, but maybe he goes over the top sometimes. Way too. Yeah. Yeah. That's what sways me more to to Bunty. So I'll probably have Bunty over Jack, but. If Jack was to calm that down, which he slightly is this season, Jack's like skills is really underrated. He's quick, strong, fairly aggressive, very aggressive. Reminds me a lot of like a bar early Barnett. So um, still needs more time to grow. So I'll go off far over uh, Hetherington. But I just wow. want to share my love yep. with uh, Hetherington as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, these. I mean, these guys are good players as well. Um Easy dubs. Yeah, shout out Kiwi Raider as well. Knights fans are not happy that Matt Croker and Brody Jones are playing sweet music to my ears. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, especially um, out of that bench, eh? Like Dylan Lucas. Yeah. Oh, sorry, bro. Like, but Dylan Lucas uh, missing out here. Like, and he's a great player as well. Like, AOB is making some really, really weird, tough decisions so early on in the season. So that's what worried about me about the Knights and where they placed this year yeah. because there's a lot of chop and changing that shouldn't have happened so early. And look at our guys just sitting there, man. These, these are Ooh. great, great young players. Jazz massive shift last week. Ali massive shift last week. CHT, yep. beautiful touches uh, to close out the game. Tamari, Leotoa, the next big thing, man. Oh. It's just It's just the depth we've got. As you go down the line, um, let's 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 wrap this up anyway. So in the forwards, we had one Adam Egan, so that's three. Yep. Uh, Frizzell, one to them, three one. Uh, 
keep well up for us. It's four to one, five to one, and then we got six, seven, uh, two of the bench, and then uh, another two. So um, seven to three plus the four, 11, <laughs> 11 to five, 11, five, one. That's 17 mm. people. Yeah, yeah. That's so that fair. means it's 30 points plus. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we're expecting this now. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We've said this before, but um, nah, we we know it should be it should be it should be a good one. Um, but yes. Um, now let's get into score predictions. How the game mm. will play out. I haven't watched much nights. I saw that they beat the Storm. Um, that's without a monster, without a Jerome Hughes, um, things like that. Um, what's your making of how this game will 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 play out? Yep. If everything goes right for us, I could see this being a 13 plus game for us. And I do hope that, especially with what we've shown very early on this year, uh, we can really tire out these forwards and that, that cover off the bench for me, like leaves me licking my lips. I think we can get like a good, like 24, 30 point game to their, they got some great attacking players. So I'll give them like six to 12. So I'll, I'll probably go 30 to 12. Um, I think we can put some really damaging points on here, honestly. Yep. And that's that's my honest opinion. Like the Knights this year have been very, very flat. And I don't think any of the changes that AOB has been doing with the Knights is helping them at all. I think it's just holding them back from actually growing into yep. a decent unit together. Um, so and I, I just think it's going to be fractures. So like, uh, I think we yeah, can really catching a team on that. bad break. Yep. Yeah, no, exactly. I, I probably can see the same thing. We're, we're building into our season. Um yeah, and I actually, I actually love that. I think we're we've got guys like Morata and Walker coming back, and even like it's hard for us to put Pompey down as a massive weak link. You know yeah. what I mean? So it's almost like yeah. we've strengthened our team overall. And then you're adding RTS. Like depth has been a great job by the the, the club CG um, Robo uh, Cappy to to kind of get us to this position right now where you know we're we're looking really good. And I probably agree with you, bro. Um, I I think. Yeah, I think it could be definitely 13 plus. I think um, if we get everything right and, and get, stick to our game plan, yeah, we, we should definitely um, break them down there. I, I totally agree. Um, so you heard it there first, guys. 13 plus, book it. Go to your local um, betting aid now. <laughs> Chuck us on, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any, <laughs> if you want any time. If you want any time, any time brother. Anytime, Jam. Obviously, the obvious ones for me, I, I've got a spade of Dallin being on the back of those sets and stuff like that. But I wonder, RTS should be on, like, should be around those, like, 2 to $3 ranges. So if he's anything outside of that, mm. the 350s and that, chop that up, eat that up. Because I think I think RTS Outback is going to have a really, really good game. Um, other than that, hopefully this is a, uh, the game that Kate Wall gets on the back of a grubber or something like that and Ooh, does what he's, nice. I've been saying. So I, I like the look of that. I do. Yeah, no, very good call. And, and off topic here, um, Lakeham linking some info in the wrong chat, he says. Uh, Walsh signs five-year deal 5.5. Wow. True. Well done. Well done to him. I thought he would have got a bit more from it. One point. That's one point. That's what, like 1.1 1. 1. 1 a year? On top. Yeah, 1.1. One, one. Yeah. One one a year. Well, that might be quite high. I mean, what was Haas was about the same, about one point two or no? Yeah, I feel like the, they may be taking a little cut so they stay together as much as they could. Still a decent chunk, but like, yeah, I think they're all taken like because Mam was on like seven hundreds, wasn't he? Or did he get Mills? Yeah, yeah, like I think he... something like that. But yeah, well done to those boys. Obviously, you know, it's it's always good to see like oh, an ex warrior do well, but also not like you know what I mean. But always yeah, good, like. He was always one of us at one point, so I'll put him down as that. But yeah, yeah, congratulations. And, and, yeah. congratulations. Uh, back to our, our, our topics. Um, mistakes have led us down here by SC Warrior. We need to execute our attacking plays on a higher level, especially around. Yes, there have been some lulls in the game. Um, I think we're rounding out. We're getting a little bit more control. I mean, I, told, I was having a chat with a guy on Instagram. He's, we're talking about how we've noticed there's less of those. Um, offside penalties in terms of when we pin them down. Remember yep. we had at the start of last season we had those line speed penalties? Yeah. Just too eager. And I think we've kind of settled our line speed. We're getting it right. Yep. Um I think we'll start to say maybe see a few less penalties um as we go along. Um I mean there's obviously changes, the new kicking rules, 
Yeah. Um, there's there's just multiple things, you know, leg grabs. We, that's kind of calmed down a bit. I think guys are getting their heads around. Um, you know, you can't you can't just lift the leg. You got to actually you know, attempt to go to ground. Yeah. Um, all that type of stuff. So yeah, I think we I think we'll we'll get it right and we'll get better as we go along. Hopefully. Um, but yeah. I'm just really excited to see our attack in this one, especially our game plan and that. If we use it to the way we've been using it lately, I see a lot of drop balls out of like, obviously Jenkins, as I said, usually more of a center playing on the wing and Nari Tuala, uh, decent under the high ball, I guess a decent work. But like if Shawnee keeps peppering him all night, we saw Xavier Coates cough it up and we see like great possession that we have in good field position and just beating with our defense. So we've been doing it so well to start the year. Um, just continue building off it because that is it like the Panthers do that to the best and they're the best team in the comp. We can do something so similar. I've seen it with Rocco and all these boys. They get down there, they shut things down really quickly. That's that's how we beat the Knights. Get them out of good field position because KP in good field position is where everything is a bit of a worry. Yep. Yeah, good call. Good call there. And uh Khan saying Johnson will have a chip on his shoulder about Ponga stealing his Delhi in middle and slap him up. Slap him up with like a little schoolboy. <laughs> I love that energy, brother. Um, I, th I think we um, we pretty much covered everything. Um, just quickly on the Volkman situation, I was, I was just sort of a, a random yep. topic, but Volkman kind of getting called out at the moment. Who's going to pay the rest of his, his uh, contract? What's your thought? Mm -hmm. What what happened there? Feel for Volks. Um, yep. A bit of a yeah, a bit of a tough one. What's your what's just your general thought? I think my general thought is it's like now the later lands sort of come out and the way everything's sort of going about things. Obviously, he was the one that asked for the release from us. Um, and then we've ended up coming back and, and paying him for his surgery and all that when everything happened with the Dragons. And it came out later and all that. But it was good to see our club, you know, put him under our wing and that. Um, the money sort of thing is like I kind of hope that we aren't the ones really to pay way too much out of that as well because he did break contract, obviously. And yep. the Dragons should have some sort of accountability for, you know, putting him out on their fan base and saying that they've signed him, running him out there and training and um, having him out there with Yellow Bib. And like, uh, yeah, it's a sticky situation. It's a tough situation. But I kind of, the way the later land is looking at the moment, his manager definitely hasn't done him any wonders. And it really yeah. is sad because I wish he stayed at the Warriors. But, um, but yeah, it just is what it is. It is what it is. And uh, we wish him well. Um but yeah, um, thank you guys for that's the show. Before all of you leave, please give us a like and a subscribe. It helps with our content. We're trying to grow our platforms. We're trying to do more uh, really good content and, and and support you guys. So we appreciate your support. Likewise, if you're on Ash Thomas's channel, please give that a like and subscribe. And guys, if you are over here on Wires Up TV, shoot over to Ash's channel as well. Type in Ash Thomas. What would be the what would be the key words for searching you, bro? Ash Thomas Rugby League, or what, what's the best search? I'm not too sure. I just search up Ash Thomas, and there's me and one other bloke. I'm not Ash Thomas Films. Uh, I'm <laughs> just Ash Thomas. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I will put the name in the description anyway. So yeah, we'll yeah. sort that out. We'll, we'll, we'll fine tune. I'm getting better at doing that stuff. But if you got time, please go over there. Ash isn't far off from 1,000 subscribers. Uh, and he's putting in mass. He's on nine fifty. He's putting in massive work, not just Warriors content, NRL content, watch alongs, everything, man. So Thank we you, appreciate bro. you guys supporting us. Thanks again, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the Ash, the Madman Thomas. I like that nickname, man. The Madman Ash, the Madman <laughs> Ash, Madman Thomas. I like that, Jacko. Um, yeah, wait for Thomas yeah. the Tank Engine Bar, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, shout out to the brothers. Now, thanks, everyone, for your support um, from wherever you're coming in from. Um, we Thank will you. be back uh, on Sunday night, 8.30 p.m. Yes. Uh, for the full credit to the boys, the post-match. I know there'll be a lot of people there to watch that, but come along on, on there. Uh, in terms of my content, we will be, I'll be doing a few previews coming out to probably tomorrow or the following day. Um, wānanga, won't be any wānanga because we've been doing them live. So I hope you guys have been enjoying the the Minecraft version of the Wananga. Um, we'll try our best <laughs> to get 1080p. Um, but uh, yeah, the, unfortunately, the the streaming service may be cutting it down even even slower. But we'll try our best. Um, yes. But thank you guys for all your support. Any last words, Ash? Oh, what content you got coming out this week, or you just where you at, brother? 
Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm just taking it easy this week, man. Um, I will be doing my combined 13. So on TikTok, if you haven't got me on TikTok, make sure you go check out my TikTok now. I've been uploading a little bit on that as much as I can. So my combined 13 Beautiful. of the Doggies and the Rabbitohs. I thought that'd be a great matchup because they've just had such nice. a big rivalry and all that. So I thought that'd yeah. be really, really fun to do. Um, with the YouTube side of things, um, I won't be doing a watch along this weekend. I just want to have time with my wife and my family. If you do know what happened, um, it was on yep. my YouTube and all that. So go check that out on my community page. Um, but I just want to have some time with family around Easter. But I will be back and doing my thing straight back after. I just think family time is okay at the moment. And um, yeah, absolutely. I just need to cuddle up with my wife. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely, guys. And family time, especially over Easter, enjoy the long weekend. For me, yeah. I think I've got like four or five days off. I think I've got the Friday yeah. off. Saturday, Love Sunday, that, Monday. Brother. So enjoy all those moments with your family. Um, take time out. Take a break from footy. Take a break from watching well, I was up TV now, but actually, <laughs> if you've got time, <laughs> you're getting sick of, of, of the family, jump on and watch a bit of the stream. But, <laughs> uh, we appreciate you guys. Thank you always for your support. And we'll catch you guys uh, on Sunday for the full credit to the boys. Peace. Thank you.